Welcome to Turkey. Of all of our travels, Turkey has been the most fascinating and I will show you the best places to visit while here on vacation. But now to Cappadocia, the most fascinating city we have ever visited. We started by waking up before dawn to see the spectacle everyone travels to see while in Cappadocia. It starts with a few hot air balloons flickering in the morning, which in itself is so pretty. But then eventually, a few hot air balloons start rising in the air. Before you know it, close to a hundred hot air balloons are scattered throughout the morning sky, traveling wherever a breeze will take them. This is one of two ways to experience the hot air balloon event here in Cappadocia. Watching them from a good vantage point, and then also getting in a hot air balloon. But trust me, just watching them is almost as incredible as being in them. Now, the Turkish bath. You want an authentic experience for your Turkish bath or hammam. You can tell if it's an authentic hammam because these rooms have a few characteristics. Ceiling domes with holes in the top, and also in the center of the room, there will be a large table with faucets all along the wall around it. This one is the Kelebek hammam and it is the best and most authentic one in the Cappadocia area. The rooms I described are called Sika Click, and the structure is important for the amplified sound of splashing water and the circulation of pleasant aromas in the air. I highly recommend this one. You start off by lying on that center table with a washing of warm water poured across your body, and then a scrub off of all your dead skin. After that, it's time for my favorite part, the bubbles. In my opinion, you haven't really been to Turkey unless you have had a Turkish bath. This landscape is also ideal for ATV rides, which is what we did later that evening to both tour the area and watch the sunset. The quads were thrilling, traveling around all the steep rock formations that are just superb and so peculiar. At one point, our tour guide took me on a little joy ride that was awesome. These formations are so monumental and you just fly around them and there is more at every turn. What is interesting about the formations is that they are really hard rock but at the same time also kind of soft and fairly easy to carve out. So early civilizations including some Christian civilizations would carve into the rocks and make themselves abodes, churches, and other dwellings for themselves. In just a second you will see they even did this for entire cities. So there is a lot of story around these rocks. In fact, they hardened from volcanic ash called tuft, and that tuft eroded over time, leaving these enormously impressive rocks. So on this ride, we made a few stops where some of the more impressive dwellings and rocks were. So it was off to do more shopping and picture taking at Gallery Ickman. This is an ornate carpet store in the middle of Cappadocia. This store has stacks and stacks of thousands of carpets covering every inch of the place. People generally like to buy carpets while in Turkey because carpets are part of the lifestyle here and thus there is such a selection of carpets in Turkey. But Gallery Ikman just takes the cake when it comes to carpet selection. What is interesting is that eventually people notice how pretty the atrium at this carpet store was, being draped with carpets all around you, and then that great lighting of the atrium. So eventually it became another spot for beautiful photo shoots. So make sure you stop by and make an appointment for pictures as soon as you get into Cappadocia. It truly is breathtaking to see how adorned the setup is in the atrium at the gallery make sure you stop by, especially if you're going to buy a carpet in Turkey. Now, as we hinted at earlier, some civilizations built entire cities underground in the hardened volcanic rock. This is K Makli, which is one of those cities in the area. There is another called Derinkuyu as well. The two underground cities are connected by man-made tunnels, but you can only visit one or the other at a time. I preferred visiting K Makli mostly because I was with my baby and this one wasn't nearly as steep as Derinkuyu, though the hallways of K Makli are more constricted. But to me that made it much more of a fun experience. These locations were started in the 8th or 7th century BC and over time through the centuries they were added to. But also the function of them changed throughout all the years as well. 
For example, even as late as the 14th century, the underground tunnels were used by Christians as protection from Mongolian incursions. But they are really cool as the caves make this multi-leveled labyrinth of rooms and hallways. This is yet one more place that will blow you away. The next morning, we went up in the hot air balloons, as opposed to just watching them from the ground as we did the day before. It is such a great experience as all the balloons around you start taking off, and before you know it, you are in the air with all of them as well. Now, I picked this specific company because they had an option to go up in the hot air balloon for a longer time than the other hot air balloons. And I wanted the option of an extra 30 minutes. And trust me, it was so worth it. The time goes by so fast anyway, so you might as well get as much time as you can out of the experience. Now, the landscape from above the valley is amazing, which once again is why this spectacular even exists. So I recommend going and taking it all in the crisp morning air, the beautiful rock formation, and passing above and through the valleys. Eventually, you get to see the sunrise from the hot air balloon over the mountains, and the view is like none other. You just feel so free. It's hard to explain, but if you are only mildly afraid of heights, I actually still recommend this. It feels really safe, and the takeoff is so subtle that it may not even bother you at all because you'll be in the air before you know it. And alone, this will make your trip to Turkey worth it. Walking around Cappadocia itself is just so great. It's one of those places that just being there is a treat because it is all so new and scenic at every turn. I mean, everything from the businesses to the art and the hotels themselves are all built into the rock formations. I mean, how cool is it just to stay in a cave hotel? Now for the best of all the cave hotels, which was the one we stayed in. Like I said, from its rooftop, it has the best vantage point of all the balloons that take off. The premises are stunning and the hotel hosts are great too. Every morning their complimentary breakfast was the best assortment. Now while I think you really can't go wrong with most cave hotels, the rooms are so beautiful here and the rooftop is just the best and it has all of today's luxuries while staying in a cave. So make sure you subscribe to my channel as I find all the best places to stay, things to do, and ways to experience them wherever we go. And stay up to date by joining my Instagram as well. Also, don't forget to do a few hikes while you're in Cappadocia. The best is to just wander around and find a spot to hike and watch the sunset on your own. When we were hiking around, that is when we noticed some people actually still live in these caves and they seemed abandoned at first sight. I'm sure there are even better hiking spots than the ones we found as well. If you love travel, make sure you subscribe. If you want to see more of the footage of the individual activities we did from most of the places I went in Turkey, I will put them in a playlist at the end of this video. And then also I will put in another playlist all of our trips including Iceland, Jamaica, Ireland, Thailand, and more. Now it was off to the ancient city of Ephesus. I almost decided not to go to Ephesus, but actually it was one of the most surprisingly awe-inspiring things I've done on all my travels. It was very interesting to see what survived and what did not survive during the centuries of wear and tear. The ancient ruins were magnificent, and to think we were walking where people like the Apostle Paul walked and would preach to the people here in these amphitheaters. Just mind-blowing to me. However, this ancient city has more to it than just that. What was cool for us is that we got there right when the gates opened. Having the grounds all to ourselves for a little while was well worth getting up early even on vacation. I always tell people waking up early on vacations to visit popular attractions is the way to go. After Ephesus, we drove a couple hours away to our next location. Let me introduce to you Pamukkale by saying there is a little known secret to arrive to Pamukkale before all the gates open, so you can get to the attraction before most other people do. You see, most people go to Pamukkale to take pictures of this phenomenon that is formed from centuries of deposits from that light blue mineral water that forms an all-white mountain. This makes for a sight that you will never see again, let alone taking a dip in the warm water to enjoy the scenery if you choose to do so at the same time. The secret is to arrive at Hierapolis, 
which is the kind of the area of the park that it resides in, at the opening of the South Roman Gate, which opens earlier than all the other gates of the park. But you will still have access to everything. Another upside to arriving early in the morning is you just get to experience the mountain in its serenity with some hot air balloons that are also taking off early in the morning and then feel the warmth of the flowing thermal water as well. Once on top of Pamukkale, you will see why it is so impressive. I will tag the south gate in my map that comes with the itinerary in the YouTube description of this video. But before leaving Hierapolis, there's another gem located within the park that is worth a stop. This is the Cleopatra Pool, also located within Hierapolis. Now, these pools may not look like much. The water is kind of murky, the pool is busy with tourists, and there are some vendors around selling merch. But what is cool is you are actually swimming in ancient ruins. That's right, in the 17th century, an earthquake pummeled the surrounding building, and remnants of the massive marble columns still lie in the pool today. We start in Istanbul at our bed and breakfast, on a charming little street right next to the eminent Galata Tower. This tower was built in 1348, but what most people visit the Galata Tower for now are the pictures. That is why we decided to stay here, because we wanted to get up early before everyone else to get unobstructed pictures with us in the tower. Now, you can't visit Istanbul without visiting at least one of the mosques. There are three major mosques, all fairly close together. In fact, the Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia are within a one minute walk of each other. We visited Hagia Sophia because it was originally a Christian church of the Roman Empire and later converted into a mosque, then a museum, and recently a mosque once again. So you can tell there is a lot of history behind this mosque. Now something important to know before going, the mosque has distinct hours for visitors and for prayer. And we wanted to experience both, so we returned at night to see their prayer rituals too, and in the day we went just to visit and get some pictures. Timing is important for these mosques, so I highly recommend you get the schedules and find the best times to go for you. In my itinerary I have linked to as a guide to this video, I link to the prayer times and how to know the best times to go. So for prayer, go at the hours on that website. Close to the mosque was a restaurant. It was amazing as it had the floor pillow style seating and that's just the beginning of this amazing experience at this restaurant. The best part about this restaurant was the whirling dervishes as entertainment, if I'm allowed to call them entertainment. The practice of the whirling dervishes started in the 12th century and has been passed down ever since as a unique style of meditation within their dervish fraternity. The dervishes spin to the music in specific wardrobe and in certain positions. As for me, it was impressive to just watch them spin without getting too dizzy. And it is surprisingly captivating, almost hypnotic, and at the same time, relaxing. Now, if you eat nearby, you're going to want a great dessert after. That is where sticky ice cream comes into play. In Turkey, their ice cream is known as dunderma. Now, you don't just want your dunderma anywhere. You want a good show to go along with it. And the show is at your expense. But if you're a game, it's really fun and kind of funny. You can't just go to any dunderma stand. I know because I went to plenty and this guy was the best that we found here. I wish I had time to show you the others and how this guy compares, but I have a video with more about the different Dunderma stands so you can see what I mean at the end of this video. I will have that video in a playlist and you can watch that with all the individual activities I did in Turkey with more footage after this travel guide video. Just click on the link of the playlist at the end of this video. What would a visit to Istanbul be without visiting the Grand Bazaar? The Grand Bazaar is one of the largest and oldest covered shopping markets in the world. It is regarded as the first shopping mall and gets over 91 million visitors a year. And if you've followed all of my travels, Turkey is the country we shopped at the most. 
as the quality of the products was a lot better than other markets that we'd been to in the rest of the world. The shopping here is so good that we even bought pendant lights for our kitchen while we were here in Turkey. It is one of the best places to discount shop for just about anything, including carpets, trinkets, spices, lanterns, jewelry, dish sets, and lamps. The lantern shop was probably our favorite place to shop as it made a great photo op as well. If you couldn't already tell, rooftops are kind of a thing here in Turkey. Possibly none of them are as unique as this rooftop. The view once again is just incredible with birds flying by and all around and a view of all the major mosques nearby. Now this spot is fairly new because there used to be another popular rooftop just like this one called Kube, but it recently was shut down. And while this one really doesn't have a big a name as Kube, the view with the birds is just as fantastic with all the carpets laid down and in such a nice setup. My travel itinerary is in the description of this video. It is a few dollars to support the channel, but it gives you the needed information and maps of all the best things to do while in Turkey, which took me months to put together. We found this amazing chocolate restaurant at a nearby mall. I think it's even a chain restaurant that is unique to Turkey. At least their Instagram makes it seem that way. So if you want to visit this mall and visit Choco Labs, I highly recommend it. So like, subscribe, and watch a video from one of these other playlists now.